A joblet is a component that replaces a group of components from a job. They're stored in the repository view of Talon Studio, and you can reuse them multiple times in the same job or different jobs. In the designer, you can expand or collapse your joblet to reveal or hide its components. Hiding the details of how the subtasks are built reduces the number of icons and connectors visible on the designer, making it significantly easier to understand and troubleshoot your jobs. Using joblets along with your main jobs does not affect performance because each joblet's code is integrated into the main job at runtime. You can easily create joblets from an existing job by selecting all the components required from the designer and using the built-in functionality of Studio to refactor the components into a joblet. Alternatively, you can create joblets from scratch. In Studio, the palette contains four components, input, output, trigger input, and trigger output that you can use specifically to create joblets. You can use the input and output components to exchange data. For example, this joblet's input component receives data from the main job while the output component returns data to the main job. You can use these components in conjunction with row connections of the main job. Joblets use the trigger input component in conjunction with the trigger connections of the main job to begin execution of the joblet. Joblets use the trigger output component to initiate the execution of another job or subjob. You can use joblets to perform generic tasks in different jobs in your project, such as loading context variables required for job execution, establishing connections, and gathering logs. In this demo, we'll build a joblet from scratch and then use it in the main job to perform a specific task. Let's begin by creating a new joblet that performs the simple task of logging any input it receives to the console. In the repository, open Joblet Designs, then Standard, and choose Create Joblet. We'll call it Log to Console and click Finish. By default, creating a joblet automatically adds input and output components to the designer. Here, we want to receive a file from another job, but not return any data to that job, so we'll keep the input component and delete the output component. Now, let's configure the rest of the joblet to perform the task, in this case, to log the data passed down from the main job to the console. So we'll add a tlog row component and connect it to the input with the main row. We must configure the input component with the schema of the data being received to the joblet. We'll select the component and, in the component view, change the schema dropdown to repository, then click the ellipses to the left of edit schema. We'll navigate to the input's component metadata, select it, and click OK. Then click Yes to propagate our changes. Let's save the joblet, and then we'll configure the main job which will now display in the designer. The single input component in this job reads a list of states from a delimited file. To pass this data to our joblet, we'll drag our joblet from the repository into the designer. Next, we'll connect the components using a main row so the data passes from the tfile input component to the joblet. When we execute the main job, the list of states appears in the console. Next, we'll create a joblet by grouping the components in an existing job. Let's open the existing job, select the required components, right-click, and select the Refactor to Joblet option. Name it Mapping Joblet and click Finish. Studio generates the joblet with the details provided along with the input and output components. By selecting the tab for the original main job, we see the components we previously selected 
have been replaced by the new joblet component. Let's expand the joblet in the same pane to display the components. You can see that both joblets are stored here in the repository, allowing you to reuse them easily.